Hello everyone. In section 15.3, uh, the questions from 1 to 14, they're asking you to find the average uh, rate of change, uh, the average rate of change in the function y is equal to f of x when you are when x is changes changing from x1 is equal to minus 1 to x2 is equal to 2 so the average rate of change is denoted by or the formula is denoted by the change in y divided by the change in x so you can write this as the change in y so if you write down you can write this as y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 and if we use this function then if i put x1 here that will give me a y1 and if i put x2 here this will give me y2 so y2 would become f of x2 minus y1 would be f of x1 divided by x2 minus x1 so if you are given any type of function now you can find out the average rate of change in the given function so the first one is given as y is equals to f of x and the f of x is given by 3x square so what we need is we are given x1 we are given x2 what we have to find is f of x2 and f of x1 so if we want to find of f of x1 x1 here is minus 1 so we can put for x1 we can put minus 1 and in the in the function we just replace x by minus 1 so 3 times minus 1 whole square and the square of minus gives you 1 so that gives us 3 now we can find out f of x2 and x2 is given by 2 so in this function we replace x by 2 so 3 times 2 square 2 square is 4 4 times 3 is 12 so now we have f of x1 we have f of x2 we have x1 and we have x2 so we can find out the average rate of change of function y with respect to x so f of x2 is 12 minus f of x1 is 3 x2 is 2 minus x1 is minus 1 so we can say that 12 minus 3 gives us 9 and this is 2 minus minus becomes plus so you have 9 over 3 which is 3 so the average rate is 3. Now in question number 5, the function is y is equal to f of x and that is x squared divided by x plus 4. So if we find, if we want to find out f of x1, that would be f of minus 1, replace x here in this function with the minus 1, so minus 1 squared divided by minus 1 plus 4 square of any number becomes positive and that gives us 3 so we have 1 over 3 for the f of x1 f of x2 would be replacing x with the 2 so we have a square of 2 and 2 over 4 that becomes 4 the, the down on 2 plus 4 gives us 6 we can uh, cancel these both by 2 so this gives us 2 over 3 now we have both the values for f of x1 and f of x2 and we can substitute that in the formula of average rate of change f of x2 is through 2 over 3 f of x1 is 1 over 3 divided by x2 is again 2 minus minus 1 so here we have 3, we already know that, minus minus plus, and plus 1 and plus 2 gives us 3. We can take the LCM of this one, so that is 2 minus 1, and here we have 1 over 3 divided by 
3 so which means 1 or 9 Uh, in question 12, the function is 3x cubed plus 4x minus 5. So what we have to do is again find out f of x1 and f of x2. x1 is minus 1 and x2 is 2. So we replace x by minus 1 in this function. So 3 times minus 1 power 3 plus 4 times minus 1 minus 5. So minus 1 times minus 1 times minus 1 gives us minus 1. And that minus 1 multiplied to 3 gives us minus 3. And minus 1 into plus 4 gives us minus 4 and minus 5 as it is. So if you add all of them, that gives you minus 12. Now we put for x, we replace 2. So that is 3 times 2 cubed plus 4 times 2 and minus 5. 2 times 2 times 2 gives us 8 and 8 times 3 is 24. And 4 times 2 gives us 8 and minus 5 as it is. So if you subtract them thing, uh, these things, that gives us 27. Now if we replace all these, put, substitute all these values in this formula, the rate, average rate of change would be 27 minus minus 12 divided by 2 minus minus 1. So 27, this minus into minus gives us plus. So 27 plus 12 divided by, and this gives us 3. So 39 divided by 3. So if we divide this by 13, this gives us 13 into 3 gives us 39. The last question is about, uh, is the function f of x is equal to x power 4 minus 10? So if you want to find out f of x1, that is replacing x1 by minus 1, its value. Uh, in this function, we replace x by minus 1. So minus 1 power 4 is plus 1 and minus 10 as it is. If you subtract them, that gives us minus 9. Again, in the same function, we put x2, x for 2, or replace uh, 2 by x by 2. So if you replace 2 here, is 2 power 4 minus 10. 2 power 4 is 16, and minus 10 gives us 6. So now substitute these two values and these two's value, two values in this formula of average rate of change. So 6 minus minus 9 divided by 2 minus minus 1. 6 minus minus becomes plus, so 6 plus 9 divided by 3. That is 15 divided by 3, and this gives us 5. So the question number 15 is about, uh, it says that a ball is thrown straight up into the air. Uh, it says that a ball is thrown straight up into the air. The height of the ball can be described as a function of time, which is this one. And uh, H shows the height in feet and T time is in seconds and they're asking you to find out the average rate of change in the height between when t1 is 0 and t2 is 2 this is uh, part 1 then second part says t1 is 0 and t2 is 4 and third part is t1 is 0 and t2 is 8 so the first thing that we have to do is find out the formula which is this one that the rate of change of average rate of change of Height with respect to time is given by h of t2 minus h of t1 divided by t2 minus t1. So what we need to do is to find out this and this, because t2 and t1 is already given. So we, in this uh, height function, we have to put first t1, which is 0. So for all t, we will put 0. So that gives us 0. Now in, to find out h of t2, for t2, we will put 2. So in this function for t, we will put 2. So minus 16, 2 power 2 plus 128 into 2. So when you calculate this one, this gives us minus 64, and that 128 times 2 gives us 256, and if you subtract them, it gives us 192. So substitute these values in this formula, and the values of t1 and t2. So 192 minus 0, 2 minus 0, so that gives us 192 divided by 2 which gives us 96, so the average rate of change in height is 96 feet per second. In the second part, we just replace uh, T1 by 0 and T4 by 
T2 by 4. So if, if you put T as 4 in here, we get um, 4, 4 squared is 16, 16 times 16 is 256, and 128 into 4 gives us 512. If you subtract them, this gives us 256. Substitute that in the formula. So 256 minus 0, 4 minus 0, and this gives us 64. Now, in the third one, what you have to do is uh, you have to just replace this by 8 and calculate the values. Uh, this would be 8. So the rest of the calculations you have to find out. So that is 64. You can simply multiply them for 6. 24, 36, 4, 2, so that is minus 10, 24, and 64, um, 16, 16 plus is 22, and 8 plus 0 is 10, so that gives us a 0, and now we have to put these values in here so 0 minus 0 divided by 8 gives us 0 feet per second right now in part B they're asking you how long does it take for the ball to hit the ground which means when when would be the height 0 so when in this function if we put height is equal to 0 so we can write this as 0 is equal to minus 16 t square 128t. Now we can see that uh, here t is common. So here is left minus 16t plus 128. You can write this as t into minus 16t plus 128 is equal to 0. Right, they're, they're both the same things. So now this means that either t is zero or minus 16 t plus 128 is zero. So this means if I leave minus 16 t here and take the 128 to the other side, and if we should divide both sides by minus 16, this minus 16 will cancel that one. And here we have t is equals to this minus will cancel this, so you have 128 or 16. You can simplify it starting from 2, or if you have good knowledge of um, cancellation, you can do it with big numbers. So if you start with a 2, that is 8, that is 6, 64, and 8, 8 are 64. So your t is 8, or your t is 0. So these are the two conditions. When will be the height zero? When will be the height zero? When time is zero or when time is eight? Time zero means it hasn't even started. So it, you cannot uh, take t is equal to zero because it hasn't even started taking up. So if it's already gone and then it's coming down, then it has to take some time. That's why your answer should be t is equal to eight.